Recently, I ran a tiny experiment with a bunch of colleagues. I decided to name the session as uh, Bitching About Brands. And the plan was very simple. I would show them the logo of a particular brand. And then if they had anything that they wanted to bitch about with regards to that brand, not really about their advertising or communication, but uh, generally about their experience with the brand, then they could bitch about it. And these brands were from all kinds of sectors, whether it's uh, ride hailing or delivery services to entertainment companies to dating uh, places to banks and automobiles and healthcare and public sector like you know uh, it was a mix of all kinds of sectors that you can think of and as i had expected people loved bitching about brands and uh, you know there was a lot that kept on flowing there were some exceptions where people actually loved a couple of the brands but if you leave those exceptions aside the general norm in the group was that there was a lot of catharsis uh, and there was a lot of release happening with respect to each of the different brands that I was uh, sharing with them. And then as we continued talking about the reasons why they disliked or hated or in some cases they had turned antagonistic towards uh, certain brands, interesting things started emerging. I had expected a lot of big reasons to come out. But surprisingly, a lot of these reasons which were coming out were very, very small, broken experiences with certain brands. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the stories and, and the broken experiences which kind of uh, became the center point of that discussion. And what I've tried to do is classify them into certain themes which were emerging and try to look at what are the lessons for the brands that they should be keeping in mind. So let's get started with the key learnings. The world of marketing is vast, complex and rapidly evolving. But with just a bit of help, it can be a lot of fun. On this channel, I simplify real-world marketing for all the curious minds out there. Hi, I'm Rahul and this is the business of marketing. So this video is not about the big PR disasters, you know, the likes of uh, Pepsi with Kendall Jenner or Cadbury's uh, with the Worms incident or even Maggie with uh, the lead incident. I think those uh, instances have all been shared a lot and uh, they have also been analyzed a lot. What I'm going to focus on instead is the tiny, tiny irritants, the small things that uh, brands continue to get wrong. And the thing is that while a lot of big brands do tend to get away and there are other reasons why they get away with some of these errors. But if you are a small business or if you are a startup, you can absolutely not afford to make some of these mistakes. I've tried to put these together into five different areas and let me start sharing each one of them. The first point is about the lack of human touch. Bots are everywhere these days and if you land on a website within the first couple of seconds you will see a banner overlays the screen trying to collect your email ID and if you escape that the next thing that will pop up is a bot and the bot is trying to be of assistance and if you actually have a question or need some kind of assistance the bot is rarely able to help you out because not all of them are programmed to understand natural language or not all of them are designed to be able to be of real assistance they are oftentimes designed to collect email IDs and give out freebies, but not always designed for customer service in the right way. Now, I like bots as in they can be fun to use sometimes, but then there are times when you are really in need of assistance and the bot keeps on asking you a whole bunch of questions. And after that, it is really not able to provide you with any kind of assistance. It is more of a hindrance than being any kind of help. It stops being fun or stops being useful at that point. In similar way, there are a lot of brands which go to extreme extent to try and hide or keep away the contact us information or the help section. And sometimes they create almost a maze of sorts where you have to go through questions and uh, take a lot of selections before you are even allowed to send an email for customer service, leave alone being able to talk to a human being uh, and interact with them. And I'm not even going to talk about uh, the customer service experiences that follow later. So the point I'm trying to make over here is that in an effort to automate things, to improve efficiencies, to reduce cost, completely stripping off the human touch is not something which is often the right decision to take. And if you're a brand, don't shy away from retaining some human touch. That human touch is, is what can make a difference between turning a detractor into a promoter of your brand. 
The next thing I want to talk about is uh, giving wholeheartedly or avoiding it completely. I have spoken a lot about promotions and uh, in one of my earlier videos on price elasticity of demand, I spoke about how some of the new age brands tend to be going a bit too far when it comes to promotion. But uh, that is not the subject of this conversation here. What I want to focus on over here is try not to create promotions which have absolutely no relevance for your customers. During our discussion, we had a lot of conversation around uh, some of the industries like telcos, banks and uh, delivery and ride hailing services. Businesses. And when some of these businesses are in the early acquisition kind of stage, they are doling out bounties that customers love and sometimes it even makes them wonder that how do they even sustain their business. And very soon reality comes out and when this business starts scaling up and moves into the next stage, you start seeing that all these promotions have disappeared and the brand has almost turned into an animal that you can't recognize. And then the promotions that follow have very little relevance to you. For example, if you're a customer who never spends more than $15 on a meal, suddenly you have a promotion where you'll get a little bit of discount if you spend more than $80 or $100 on a particular meal. A lot of promotions from telcos are the ones where they say that if you use their wallet and then spend above a certain threshold at certain places which you have never visited or would probably never want to visit either, only then you can get a certain kind of discount. And the worst in this list was when the banks offered promotions. They have endless number of credit cards and debit cards and other kinds of uh, products and uh, endless number of promotions going on. And usually the terms and conditions on these promotions are 20 times as long as the promotion itself. And that too, it might be written in a language which probably only a lawyer would understand. The question that I fail to understand is that why is it so difficult to get this right? You should be doing promotions when you want people to be able to use them and feel happy about it. And if your budgets do not allow you to do the promotions, then don't do them. Don't add layers that makes it impossible for people to be able to use and enjoy these promotions. Don't make your customers feel that your intention is for them to be not able to use the promotions rather than trying to give them a promotion in the first place. The third theme which emerged in this conversation is about know when to stop chasing your customers. Retargeting is big for most brands, but for a lot of consumers, it is extremely creepy, even though they know what really is going on in the background. For once, let's just say that it's effective and it should continue if used judiciously. I'm not complaining about retargeting, at least for now. What I want to complain about is how certain brands chase the hell out of you. You might have visited a website and offered your email in the process of trying to get some information. What follows is not just retargeting, but a series of emails. The introduction email, the offer email, the free download email, the promotion email, the weekly email, and then the bi-weekly email before it's time for the monthly email, and then the webinar invitation, and then the limited time offer, and then the one-time deal. It goes on and on. The person receiving these emails might have stopped opening them from the second email onwards, yet they keep on flowing. The we miss you email comes in. You hope that it's the last email, but last it's not. More offers. And sometimes I don't understand how certain brands and people do not set frequency limits on the ads that they show on YouTube videos. I have seen the Wix and the Grammarly ads more than a thousand times. I have always skipped them and I have also reported that I do not like them by clicking the thumbs down option. And I have never bothered to open these websites either. But the same ads keep popping up again and again and again. Some of the participants in my experiment were so annoyed that they said that they would never use these brands even if they needed help with opening a website or with the grammar. Targeting and retargeting a person when you spot intent is fine. However, endlessly chasing them until they buy or sometimes even after they buy is not. It only makes them run further away from your brand. The next point I want to talk about is don't arm twist your customers. The most common example that kept popping up in this category was that of e-wallets. Now I know that everyone from banks to telcos to e-commerce marketplaces to delivery and ride hailing apps Everyone is entering into the fintech business and they all have wallets of their own. And yes, I also know that they offer promotions for using these wallets. However, it is not done when you are forcing your customers to use these wallets. There are cases where certain services are available only through the wallets which were earlier available through credit cards or even bank transfers. What if the customer still doesn't trust your wallet with their money? 
what if your customer is still not comfortable using your wallet? And while I am an Apple user, I dislike how one generation of their products are not compatible with their own previous generation of products. Or they keep blocking external hardware which does not belong to the Apple ecosystem, while their own products might be way too expensive for uh, some people. Now customers do understand that a transaction means an exchange of value. You have to give something to get something in return. And you see them willingly providing their email IDs in return for uh, some kind of a freebie like a free download or getting access to certain discounts. However, if they do not see the value in what you are providing and worse still, you arm twist them into using it, it is one of the lowest that a brand can fall. Please don't do this if you're a marketer. The next thing for brands to keep in mind is do not miss out on basic accurate information. This is especially true if you are on e-commerce. How difficult is it for you to put up multiple pictures of your product shot decently? How difficult is it to write a proper description that covers everything? How difficult is it to mention all the features on your products or even to describe its limitations and boundaries? Or to try and think about the kind of questions that the customers might have when they see your product online and try to answer them beforehand or before they place wrong orders. F&B outlets and business establishments still forget to update their working hours and holidays on Google Maps. I mean there are brands these days which have gone to the extent of taking a picture of yours and trying to show you different clothing options or even how these different makeup options would look on you. And there are brands which provide comparative charts where you can compare their different offerings across multiple criteria and sometimes with their competitors also. And there are brands which sometimes provide social commerce directly from Instagram and Facebook. There is so much that can be done to delight your customers. And yet it is incredible how certain brands manage to falter on things like providing basic accurate information and enough information. So let's take a step back and try and understand what is the common theme in the entire conversation here. You might think that it is about all the different things that uh, technology these days offers and how do you use them to your best advantage. But honestly, that is not what the core of this conversation is all about. And at the same time, it is not about trying to avoid technology. These tools and technologies are key to improving your brand experience. At the core of this entire conversation is Having a proper understanding of your customer as a human being and not as a robot with a wallet that needs to be hacked. Try and understand your customers beyond what the reports and the trends are saying. Try and speak to some of your customers and try to understand what their lives are all about. Try and understand how they use the different brands and interact with different categories. So that's all I have for today's video. What I shared is something which is not exhaustive in nature. It is based on the evidence that I gathered with a limited number of people in a small group. I really want this conversation to continue and for a lot more contributions to come in. So if there are experiences that you have had personally with certain brands, please share those experiences with me in the comment section below. I would love to gather more and more such experiences and try and do another videos sometime in the future where I have a lot more data to work with. I hope you liked what I shared and if you did, hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I strongly recommend that you do that now. And I will be back soon with uh, the next video on business of marketing. Thank you for watching.